Good morning. This is Mike Rabb. Welcome to the Copper Egg webinar on performance monitoring. Uh, it's my pleasure to be with you this morning. What I'm going to do is take you through the Copper Egg system, really explore how you can uh, monitor any type of system, whether that be physical, virtual, uh, in the cloud, uh, whatever. We even do website and web service monitoring. I'll show you a little bit about that. I'm also going to uh, show you how to set up alerts and notifications. And then we're going to uh, explore some key performance metrics and understand kind of the meaning behind the numbers. When you enter the Copper Egg demo, uh, there's a variety of things that uh, are available to you. And uh, you, well, you may have noticed that uh, the system just turned yellow. So one of the things that's available to you is a very visual indication of how your systems are running at any one time. If you were to come in, and in this case I'm on the Systems tab right here. Systems tab, of course, is for your servers. And again, those servers can be anywhere. As long as those servers can communicate uh, over the Internet, back to the Copper Egg app, they can be uh, monitored. Um, here I've got a variety of systems. And again, they could be literally anywhere a virtual, cloud, or, or physical. As well, within the, the uh, tabs here at the top, we have this tab called probes. Now, probes are an interesting uh, way to examine the performance of exposed uh, web sites and web services that those systems, back there on the systems tabs, those servers are running. And in fact, I am running a demo application off of one of the uh, one of those servers, and it's manifested here, basically monitoring a URL. But you could monitor a URL. You could you could monitor a TCP uh, endpoint by IP. Monitor any number of things. But this, in conjunction with the system monitoring, allows you to see kind of both systems together. Um, I told you I would go back in, go back into some detail. So let me jump in back here on the Systems tab into the server that was acting up just a minute ago. If I drill down into the server, I see at the top here some metadata about the, uh, the server. And then I see its performance. Uh, the default is over the last 15 minutes. And uh, here it's been running uh, pretty hot, off and on intermittently. And uh, I see its, its CPU uh, performance. I see uh, its network performance here. And I can go down and uh, on the Linux system, I also get uh, a graphical indication of its load over time, which is very, uh, very convenient. Uh, I don't think a lot of systems give you that. Uh, of course, memory uh, down through, I can see swap down into the file systems as far as the capacity, what's being used, and the disk I.O., which is very important, showing you, you know, actual read and write to the disk and the activity there. Uh, obviously, uh, disk I.O. is a very important function. But if we come back to the top here, I also see, uh, if you remember back on the probes tab, we had uh, the demo app. I, I see that associated here. In other words, what we can do is, through tagging, associate a particular service that's running on a particular ser uh, server. So that if that server is serving up a website or a login page or an application, I can clearly see the two of those together. And that's important because I want to see how things are in relationship, uh, the underlying server performance, which is the inside-out view, to the outside-in view of the probe. So I have that here and I can immediately go over uh, into that uh, service, uh, drill down on the details there just as easily. Let me, let me do that. If I drill down on the details there, um, I immediately see that we're monitoring, a, again, a particular URL. And um, on this side, what we're looking at instead of things like CPU and memory, we're looking at how the service is responding. So I can see that uh, the particular service has a response time of X. You know, typically you want your services to respond uh, very quickly, uh, less than one second. 
Uh, this line right here is the 1,000 uh, millisecond line. And uh, I can see most of the time it was clearly uh, responding below one second. There is this area of activity here. I can, uh, I can actually drill down on that a little bit and get some uh, more granularity around the particular uh, time frame in question and then the historical performance uh, during that time frame as well as the latency, uh, copper egg uh, gives you the uptime, which is, this is an interesting point. Copper egg, uh, instead of monitoring from one test server at any given time, testing an external URL such as this, we actually monitor from all of our test sites every cycle. So if you're monitoring something every 15 seconds and you're monitoring that from the four test servers we have in the United States, that will happen four times every 15 seconds. And uh, I've gotten a good response here over the last uh, time period so that all test servers had a positive test. In other words, it tested well uh, across that. Now, if any one server um, you know, didn't respond, it, uh, it would be degraded in the chart here. And um, in fact, the difference, I get a lot of this question, what's the difference between health and uptime? Well, uptime is purely a mathematical uh, combination of the test servers. There's four test servers, one didn't test positively, that it, that it uh, saw the, uh, the end point, uh, you'd come up with a score of 75. If the latency runs high, as we see in the, in here, in this particular time, the, uh, the response time uh, went high, then the health is uh, slightly degraded. And so health is a little bit more than uptime. It's actually the combination of did the test uh, uh, test positively and was there uh, higher latency and combination of those two will degradate health. Now this is important because whether you're talking about the, uh, the systems tab here uh, or the probes, we can monitor those, uh, again, remotely via alerts. So let me just jump over into the alerts tab and tell you a little bit about uh, the alerting uh, function. Now alerts, again, uh, we come with about uh, 12 pre-configured alerts out of the box. If I go to the alerts tab and then over to configure alerts, you'll see uh, more than 12. This is an important point. Uh, by no means are the set that we give you the de facto standard of where you should stop. You should, one, edit those alerts as you need, changing the, uh, the thresholds, changing the uh, time that those conditions exist, and you should then tie them to appropriate notification mechanisms for uh, your systems. Let me tell you a little bit about uh, more how we're using it here internally. So um, there may be situations, uh, for example, where um, you want to know about a slower response time. So if, uh, if response time is greater than eight seconds, you know, I want to know uh, via email uh, about that particular web service or website in this case. Um, in this case, uh, that uh, response time is greater, again, than eight seconds or 8,000 milliseconds. And that condition exists for at least five minutes. Uh, I want to know, but I can change that. I can make that uh, any number that I want. Let's just change that to two, just for fun. Uh, the, the point is I can easily edit, and I can create new alerts as I need. Now, one thing that uh, I think the way people use copper egg and the way people should use copper egg is maybe custom alert to alert when the service is completely down. Now, again, that's completely custom. It wasn't in the list uh, when we started, but here it is. It's configured, and in this case, I'm using SMS as a higher level alert notification mechanism on a more critical state. Again, we'll start getting indications of a slowdown if that response time gets over eight seconds. But if the system degradates more, to a full no response, I want to get an SMS about it. 
And in doing this, we allow you to better attune your business or how your systems are providing whatever application or services your business provides, but you're getting the visibility you need to be able to better manage uh, that infrastructure and get uh, you know, a programmatic way of, of seeing that something uh, is degrading without looking at the screen. Today, the last thing I want to show you real quickly is on uh, the Dashboards tab. If I go over to the Dashboards tab, uh, on the left nav here, there's a variety of, uh, of different dashboards that, that's available. You can bring in any system or probe value that's, that's natively gathered by Copper Egg and bring them into these uh, multi-timeline uh, widgets here. Uh, so that in this case, I'm bringing uh, the CPU performance in my production systems. And in this case, uh, it's the systems really behind a load balancer. So I'm looking at the performance of each server behind a load balancer. And typically, you know, they should be actually uh, behaving together. Well, here I see one system. And in fact, it was that system that turned yellow at the beginning of the demo. I'm seeing that above normal here. So I can I can surely see that history over the last 15 minutes, or I could do that for over the last week. And I can easily see anomalistic systems here on these combined dashboards. The important point is that I can create these dashboards, uh, maybe for the production operations team that monitors these load balance systems. And they can uh, easily see them, and you can easily see anomalies right here on, the, on these combined things. The other thing uh, that we do see a lot of is uh, people ask, I want to create a view for my, uh, for my management. So in this case, I'm going to go down the list here and click on the executive dashboard. And the executive dashboard gives a little higher number. Um, maybe it's the uptime uh, the current uptime of a particular uh, web service. In this case, uh, that, that web service is running 100%. Or the cumulative uptime of, of the server. In any, uh, in any respect, I can see those aggregate kind of numbers here, or the top level numbers, and just expose those here in the executive dashboard where you know, I can see that I've got 11, EC2 instances running. I can see my spend. You know, in this case, uh, we're on the, some of these servers are on Amazon. I'm actually tapping in to some of the uh, CloudWatch metrics and bringing in the cost numbers for what my spend is. And right now, um, you know, we're late in the month here. Uh, it's uh, May 30th, so uh, the spend for this month is. Uh, is 476 US dollars so far. So that these types of aggregate things can be easily exposed. The point is, Copper A gives you a lot of power right out of the box to immediately monitor your systems. Uh, we saw that on the systems tab. Again, systems are servers. To monitor your websites and web services. And to uh, bring all that together in custom dashboards that allow you to see aggregate uh, combinations of things. And then, of course, most importantly, to actively alert on any of that through our alerting system and get notified the way you need. Again, I'm Mike Grab. I appreciate everybody's time today. And I uh, hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you.